All right, sitting right off of camera, you can't see it, is a new Canon R5 Mark II. It is out, it is official, it is in my hands. I'm the first person in North America to get my hands on it. Like garbage. I see so many of these videos, and some of these videos go back for like months that I've got an R5 Mark II. So in this video, my video today, I'm gonna to talk about what I'd like to see in the R5 Mark II. And will it make me switch to mirrorless? Have I switched to mirrorless yet? No. Why haven't I switched to mirrorless? Well, it comes down to this. I'm a professional full-time photographer and I use what works for me. And what works for me is the gear that I currently have and I have no need to switch. But I'll talk about that in a few minutes here. Who am I? Why am I doing this video? My name is Mike Patterson. I've been a professional full-time photographer located here in Southern Alberta, Canada for over 39 years, a long time. I run a photo studio as well as I run a full service photo lab printing for other photographers. And I do these videos because I do a lot of mentoring, a lot of teaching. So I thought during the lockdown that we had, I'd start a channel and it's been fun. So I've continued my channel and I try to help you get better pictures from your cameras and well, save yourself some money. So the R5 Mark II, lots of rumors out there. Let's address some of them. And I've gone through it and I scoured the web for some of the fun ones and some of the bizarre ones. So first one, and I love this one, the release date. Well, according to most videos online, the release date is either late 2023 or by February of 2024. Some of them almost guaranteed 2024 February. The problem, well, I'm doing this on March the 6th of 2024. So it's past February and they have not released the camera. Now, why haven't they released the camera? Is it some great conspiracy theory? I've seen so many, so many comments about that. It's a marketing thing, people. They wanna clear out all the R5 originals, version ones, whatever you wanna call them, before they release the Mark IIs. And they also wanna ride the most popular thing that's going to happen in 2024, which is going to be the Olympics. So they're gonna tie all that together to get the most bang for their buck. They don't need to release the Mark II for any particular reason other than it's time to upgrade the camera. It's not like they're behind in technology from a standpoint of we didn't go mirrorless or that we don't have this. They have the R5, they have the R6, they have other cameras so they don't need to release it. They're going to release it when they make the most money. Now, I see a lot of comments saying, well, they're probably having problems with, probably having problems with, probably. Uh, I don't see that happening. I don't see it being a problem. I see it being a marketing thing. When's it gonna be released? April, May, June, July? My guess, and that's all it is as a guess is, you're going to see it by May. Why by May? Because it gives them time before the summer-ish rush and everything to get it out into the hands of the photographers that they want to get it into so they can build up the hype so that yeah they can ride the wave and they want to clear out as much of the r5 originals and that's why you see the prices crashing so big on that now if you want to get into mirrorless if you don't care about the new features and everything this is a great time to buy yourself an r5 original version version one mark one whatever you want to call it because the prices are ridiculously low on it and i've honestly thought of doing that but I have not, I'm gonna hold off, I'm gonna see what it has and we'll go from there. So let's address some of the other rumors, some of the other stuff that I see online constantly. The first one and the big one is megapixels. For the longest time, the rumor mill had it that it was gonna be a 60 plus megapixel camera, whether that be 61, 64, 70, 72, whatever it was, everybody had their like ideas, the rumors about it, honestly. I see it probably being closer to the 45 megapixel size only because they run into a couple issues. One is well, pretty much storage. There's only so much room that you can store stuff on a camera. And for working photographers, having an 80 megapixel sensor, they're just going to run out of room for it. Add into that video and it's just going to make ridiculous size saving everything. So. I, I don't see them going any higher than the 45-ish range for the megapixel. I'd like to be proved wrong there. I really would. Because for what I do, I would love to see a 60 or an 80 megapixel size camera. But they run into a problem with the lenses. And the thing with the lenses is on a mirrorless 35-ish body, full-frame body, 
The lenses only have so much quality, and when you start getting up to the 80, 90, 100 megapixel range on the regular lenses that we have, it's just not going to compute. I would love to be able to crop more with a higher megapixel camera, but I just don't see that happening. What would I love to see? This is a whole side trail. I would love to see Canon or some company come out with a new revolutionary medium format system with new lenses that is geared to a higher megapixel that has some of the newer features on the camera body. Not just a basic camera body, but a little bit more advanced that for guys like me that we could use it for not only our stills for shooting waterfalls, for not only stills for shooting landscapes or for stills for weddings, but we could also use it for, well, do, doing the video, doing some other stuff mixed in with it, that it would be a still camera, but it would have some other features, but I don't see that happening. And that's just my dream as a professional. All right, the next one. And this one, I don't know if I'm big on it. I can see advantages, I can see disadvantages. Supposedly, the new R5 Mark II has a new autofocus system that is AI or advanced intelligence. And it has the ability, according to some people, to lock on a subject and follow the subject, like a homing missile. You point it to a subject, it stays on the subject, and it will not lose that subject. It will track them through crowds, trees, and whatever. Now, do I see that being a benefit? In some situations, I see that being a huge benefit. I see that being great. I see as wedding photographers being able to do video and locking on a bride coming down the aisle. And if somebody stepped in the way, you wouldn't lose the focus that the camera would be smart enough to even the tip of her nose know that that's the person that they want and away you go from there. Nature, wildlife. I would love to be able to lock on something and have it stay on something in some situations. But here's the thing, people. As a professional photographer, every time you add tech, you slow down the ability to take pictures. And people say, oh no, you actually increase the speed of taking pictures. No, you may increase the accuracy. You may increase your keepers. But when you have to lock on this, turn this, adjust this, set this, all this other stuff as a professional photographer, Generally, it doesn't get used unless it's easy, and I mean really easy, to set up and use. So I see it being a benefit, but I also see it being a drawback. And for a lot of the pros out there like me, I don't see it being something that's used all the time. But I do see advantages of it. I really do have to see what they come up with. All right, the next thing, and that is the sensor. I've heard that they're doing a sensor stacking why are they doing a sensor stacking? Well, it comes out for video. And I hear so many people say, well, no, this is a still camera. It's not a video camera. Well, I'm sorry, those days are gone. Video and still cameras are merged. You, you can't go out now and buy a consumer video camera. You go out there and buy a consumer mirrorless camera or DSLR camera that does video better in some cameras, worse in some cameras but that's what you're buying. And I don't see them separating that. And I think they've learned enough from other run-ins with overheating and stuff like that, that they're gonna make the new R5 Mark II more of a video camera than a still camera, leaning more that direction for those people that want it. For me, I'm sad because honestly, I'm a still person. Yes, I do videos, obviously, but I would rather go and buy a video camera than having compromises on my still camera, but I know that's not a marketing thing that Canon's going to do. All right, the next thing is supposedly they're going to go with a subscription service. This, this one bugs me to no end. I hate anything that's subscription service, and I hope that they've learned enough from other issues they've had with their subscription services and for uh, car manufacturers have run into and other people have run into that a subscription service, uh, just, I'm sorry, I would not use it. Now, I know there's people out there who are going to use it. I know people are. But I'm sorry, for me, I want a camera that's going to do what I need it to do, what I want it to do, and that doesn't have to hook up to the internet, that doesn't have to, that I don't have to pay, that, 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 that. I just don't want that. Do I see it happening? Unfortunately, from the point of view of marketing, I see it happening. 
Is it something that I think is going to take off? For some people, I can see it taking off. For the people who are techies and not photographers, I see it being a big thing. And they're going, oh, this is great. This is... And, but yeah, I just don't... Yeah, not big on it. Hope it's not there. I don't want to have to tie in. I can just imagine being out in the bush, taking pictures when my camera goes, it's time to tie into the internet so you can continue using these features. I'm sorry, but there is no internet where I am. So I hope that's not it. In line with that... I've also heard rumors that this camera is going to have some cell phone features built into it. What do I mean by cell phone features? That it's going to have AI technology built in to edit some of your photos. Background removal too. Uh, change the background. Blur the background. Do all this stuff in camera. Again, I'm really hoping it doesn't. Really hoping it doesn't. As a professional photographer, I don't have time out shooting to have my camera do this stuff in camera. I just don't, nor would I trust it to. The last thing I'd want to do is try to do that in a wedding photo and then have it all of a sudden corrupt the card or crash or something. I just, I just don't want it to do that. So I hope it doesn't have it. But again, probably we'll have something to it just because it's a selling feature. The next one, and this is another one that I hear quite a bit is, it's going to be able to do and the numbers are just crazy. One trillion frames per second. Yes, I'm exaggerating. Uh, this high number. I, I just don't see it. Again, from a professional point of view, whether I'm shooting weddings, families, nature, wildlife, whatever it is, there's only so many frames per second that I want my camera to do. And from a professional point of view, I cannot carry enough camera cards with me. I just can't. So... I hope it's not something that they sacrifice any of the quality issues with to get higher frame per second count because for me, there's there's only so fast that I want it to go. So will I switch to the R5 Mark II when it comes out? Well, a lot of it's going to depend upon the functions and features that it has. If it goes too much to the AI side of things, too much to the video side of things, I honestly will probably end up buying another 5D Mark IV, maybe a couple more 5D Mark IVs, and be done with it. Um, I probably won't even switch to the R5. If it comes out with some of the functions and features that will make my photography better, I, I will probably switch. I, I honestly probably will make that switch this year. I need another body. I'm getting to that point now where my 70Ds are getting up there. They're getting pretty used. My The 5D Mark IVs that I have, they're getting pretty used as well. And I would like to get a new body brought into my system so that I can start working it into what I do. And I'd probably make that switch to the mirrorless and start, well, when I, anything outside the studio would be mirrorless. Anything inside the studio would be uh, the DSLRs just because I don't need the speed and stuff like that in the studio. So yes, I would probably make that switch, but it's going to depend what functions and features it has. So until next time, I hope you have a great day. I hope you don't fall for all the garbage out there. Please use your brain when you're watching these videos and when you're reading stuff online and don't make any decisions based on that. We'll talk to you next time. Take some great pictures. Bye-bye now.